Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to the Collaboration Space. I'm your host, Nancy Lucier from AVI SPL. And joining me today is Remy Del Mar, who is the Product Manager for Commercial Predictors and Augmented Reality at Epson. Welcome, Remy. How are you today? Thanks for having me, Nancy, and I'm doing well. You're welcome. Thanks for joining me. And Remy, we were talking a little bit earlier about how, you know, we know that the workplace is in flux. And we're going to kind of talk about how hybrid meeting spaces are transforming and adapting to, to meeting today's needs. So Remy, can you kick us off by sharing what you see happening in hybrid meeting spaces? Absolutely, that's actually an excellent question. I think that when we, the pandemic started, one thing that happened to all of us, we very quickly had to learn how to use Zoom, Teams, and other hybrid collaboration tools to still energize our collaboration activities with our team members, with our headquarters, with the physical spaces where we used to actually uh, congregate um, and look at a display to, for example, share a PowerPoint or share a spreadsheet to conclude decisions or brainstorm. Um, so while some of these things had already been happening in the background, but I think the pandemic definitely accelerated the need for digital collaboration more than ever. But a centerpiece of every meeting is the display, really. Like we used to get together and look at maybe a flat panel, 65, 75, or a projector to look at content. And that content typically was a PowerPoint, at least in our case, or an Excel spreadsheet. Now, when you add other elements of hybrid collaboration, like, um, and let's agree that uh, forever and ever, our lives are not gonna go back to that, like the cat Zada hat, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with fewer PowerPoints. I, I don't know about you. Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, the <laughs> idea of uh, being hybrid, I think, is just mm -hmm. um, digital nomads are going to be more. It has provided corporations with the flexibility of having remote employees and getting talents from across the globe. So, if hybrid is not going away. What is the role of display? It has been really the centerpiece of our discussions with key UCC partners, including Microsoft. And that's, that's the trend that sort of is basically the genesis of the changes we are foreseeing. So what do you see as, as driving the changes, the changes that need a display to, to fit more things on the display at once? I think a lot of us started looking at everything we have to do now in a hybrid mode, right? We're not just looking at content. Right now, as I'm talking to you, I have two other monitors in my home office, um, you know? And so I have a need to not only have a, to see you and make eye contact and still feel like we're having a conversation that's natural and organic to human interaction, but also we're dealing with other digital content. So in a typical meeting room, when people are having a passive collaboration, not in the, our case, we're having an interactive and active discussion. You're looking at content, you have a gallery of people, you have a chat or usually simultaneous other discussion that's happening on the sideline. There are emojis now that, you know, expressions that people want to provide, and there are some sort of digital notes that's being taken. So for all these mediums to have a place for everyone to kind of collaborate, you need a larger display or a larger digital canvas for all of them to coexist and have their basically place in the food chain. So even when I'm in the meeting and I'm focusing on the meeting, I'm still kind of multitasking with everything that's going on, like you said, with chat and notes and other things. You absolutely are, and you know, and I think there's a to be to be fair. Like my um, uh, laptop, all my coworkers make fun of me because it's a huge laptop. It's like a twice the size of a regular laptop. Because mm. I do need a large display because I take digital notes. I have kind of let let go of writing manual notes. So as we meet with people, we take digital notes. So now I have my display is competing with the task at hand and notes that I'm taking for the future tasks. So in that case, I do need a larger display and we can kind of multiply that by the number of people who are in the room. And also another key ingredient to that I should mention is that um, we heard a lot about Zoom fatigue at the beginning of the pandemic. If you remember seeing that, I think yeah. you know, Microsoft really took a closer look at that. And a lot of it is because when you are on a call, you can't make eye contact, you can't read people's facial expressions. Um, you know, that all causes extra work and computation on our brains that causes the Zoom fatigue. So 
if you have uh, the ability to provide a display and a camera location and audio location where it feels very organic to have a conversation with you as I'm looking at you, feels like we're actually are in each other's physical spaces when we are not, it kind of alleviates some of the Zoom fatigue. And then now the focus is more on, on collaboration and contribution to the meeting as opposed to trying to guess if people are hearing you or seeing you. Yeah, I, 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 I um, really connect with what you said about not taking paper notes anymore. When I think about just a few years ago, the files I had, file cabinets, you know, a file for every project, we don't have that anymore. Everything is online and everything is constantly changing and we need to keep it up on the screen, like you said. So with that in mind, what do you think some of the must haves are for your displays that would create that ideal uh, meeting space and seamless experience for everyone? I think for today uh, or for kind of where the time we're at now looking at display options, a large ultra wide digital canvas with regards to the size of typical room. So if you take, take, a, take the height and width of a typical meeting room from small to extra large. So from three people to let's say 20 people. Uh, for everyone to have that optimum experience of balancing content, gallery, content, collaboration tools like tasks and chat. Um, you know, you need pretty much a large display, but you want it to be small enough so that people from the corners of the room still have visibility. So it's not so huge that you can't really see the other side of what's happening. And yet large enough for everyone to be able to look at the centerpiece, which usually is the content that we share, have eye level contact with a gallery of people, some intelligence for when gallery, when physical attendees speak, that virtual attendees kind of know who's speaking. It's not a guessing game. Oftentimes I find myself scrolling through the galleries of people when I'm on a call to sort of see who's speaking. Even though I, the voice may sound familiar, that's still my brain doing extra work that shouldn't be doing. Right. So how do you kind of provide that intelligence? And of course, projection um, that has provided us with a crucial um, importance in this space where we know that um, not for every room you need a large display, sometimes it's sufficient to have a flat panel. But for many of the new modern meeting rooms where they're oriented in such a way that are conducive to virtual meetings, you can create a large 21,938 inch or so image from one single device to find a digital canvas for, both, for all those elements that I was talking about. That sounds great, being able to really connect in a meeting and connect with different people instead of having to scroll, like you said, through the different windows, who's talking so I can find them, that sounds wonderful. And I know that AVISPL and Epson has a long history of working together so we can always help people out with choosing the right solutions such as projectors. So Remy, I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy, for your time. I want to mention that we've made some major updates to our projectors on the firmware side to make, make life easier for our integrators. So 21.9 and Wacon Sync, which are two very important features of the hybrid experience and in particular teams are available on all of our projectors from 5,000 lumen to 13,000 lumen. And if any of your attendees have any questions, people who are listening to this podcast, I hope they reach out to us because we're more than happy to help them out. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate that extra info. And to everyone listening today, thanks for joining us. Don't forget, you can follow us on YouTube at AVI SPL Info and never miss a video podcast. And if you prefer to listen on the go to the audio version, just search for the collaboration space on your favorite podcast app. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time in the collaboration space. For more information, visit AVISPL.com slash Epson.